Thank you for clicking on the video today, everybody. What I wanna show you is a feature that I feel is somewhat missing in geometry nodes. So this is a workaround that I think works well enough if you are doing basic geometry nodes. I can't speak on how well this will work if you're doing very complex geometry nodes, but if you just wanna find out how to make a basic 1D, 2D, or 3D array with geometry nodes, this is the tutorial for you. Hope you enjoyed the video and I hope you learned something. I want to get started with showing you why I think that this is such a good trick. And you may say, why bother using geometry nodes to do arrays? Because there's the modifier. But there is a problem with the modifier that geometry nodes doesn't have. And that is when you take the object and you use the array modifier. I'm just going to throw a subdivision surface on here first. But if you do an array modifier, we can look at the faces down here. And it's at 1968. If I throw in an array modifier and I increase this, the amount is going up and up and up and up. So it becomes very costly if you have a high poly asset that you want to actually array. Whereas with the geometry nodes, you're not going to have that problem. So I'm going to show you how to get started with this. We can remove the array here. And this is called Suzanne, which is good. I'm going to go to collection. I'm going to call this monkey. Now, I will say this, as I mentioned, this is not perfect because Technically, the array functionality is not in geometry nodes, but this is the workaround that I found just completed the task that I needed it to. If you know a better way, I'd love to hear it in the comments because this seems like a very basic thing that geometry nodes can't do. So it's very possible that I just missed on how you're actually supposed to do it. And if someone has some guidance on it, then that would be very helpful. But the way that I've been doing it is I'll drop this into this collection and now I'm going to make a plane. I'm going to make individual planes so that this object itself does not have geometry nodes on it. I'm going to pull up the workspace, geometry node editor. I'm going to create new. I'm going to call this plane monkey width. I'm going to unplug this so that the plane disappears. We're going to add in a line node. We're going to add in a point instance node. We're going to link these up and then I'm going to select the object. You should see this pop up. So what I want to be able to do is I want to be able to go and control the amount that this is going to be duplicating right in here. So we can take this empty socket here, plug it into the count. And what that's going to do is that's going to make a integer value. So it has to be a whole number, one, two, three, four, five, six, and so on. We can actually rename this to width over here just to make things a little more uh, visually clear. And then what I also like to do is go combine X, Y, and Z, plug this into the vector. Now for this one, I'm going to say that I want the width to be along the X axis. So I'm just gonna take this empty one again, plug it into X. And now all of the controls that we need are right here. So this is how I would say you make a very basic 1D array, just left and right, up and down, whatever. And if you want to come in, you could plug these in like this. So you could have everything here. I think that typically you don't really need to do that, but you can see that the functionality is there. So I think I had that to three, which is pretty good. And now I'm just going to get rid of these. And I will just save this quickly. Monkey array. Okay, now this is the part where it it doesn't work exactly how you think it would because this, this is all I'm going to do for this particular array. Now I'm going to add in another plane. I'm gonna call this one monkey height. And we're gonna do the exact same thing. So we're gonna go, actually we can just copy it from this one. So I'm gonna grab this, go into height, drop that in. I'm going to plug this up again, go height. We're going to plug in this empty one into the Z this time. And we'll go up, uh, I think we said three. And then this has to get plugged in here. And this is what we get. So that's obviously not the exact 
functionality that we want. So this time I'm going to exit off of the Suzanne monkey. And with my eyedropper, I'm going to come up to monkey width. And when I hit that, now it's duplicating the geometry nodes from the first one. This is the only way I could get it to work in the way that I wanted it to. I couldn't call in the geometry nodes like this. Or not join geometry, sorry, geometry nodes. So you can click this and you can have the geometry nodes here. But I found that no matter what I was doing, I wasn't getting the correct functionality. So to me, it seems like this is the best way of doing it. And more or less, this is, you know, it's here. It would be nice if there's a way to get them all in here, but you do have the functionality. It's just that you have to click on different objects. And that is why I think it's so good to to do it like this. It's it's I, besides the fact that you have to kind of bump around a bit. I've had no problems doing it. But let's make a 3D array now. So this one is a little bit different, but it's more or less the same thing. So I'm going to make another plane and I'll call this monkey volume and new geometry nodes. Let's paste these in again. And this time we're going to go into the Y. And we are going to have to add in a join geometry this time. And we don't want this middle one. So I'm going to take these again. Duplicate these, join it up, and that plugs in here. So what we're going to do this time is we're going to grab the monkey height and the monkey width. And this has worked. It's just that now we need to pull it out like this. And with all of these objects, so there are 2,600 objects almost, but the faces are still at 2,000. So with the array modifier, you can't make a, an instance of the object. For those of you that don't know, if you hit Shift D, you will duplicate an object, meaning that you have two separate objects in Blender's space. Whereas with an instance, Blender has the same object more or less in two spaces. So it might be a little bit weird to wrap your head around, but what's important to know is that when you Alt D something, which is the instance, Shift D to duplicate, then what you're going to get is less calculations on Blender's part, because it's easier for Blender to understand that there's it's the same object just in two different locations where it has to calculate two separate objects when you shift D them. So doing it this way, you will get a much faster scene. So there are two small things I want to show you, and then this is all finished up. Now, one of the problems that you're going to have is you need to move this object. So if we go to move it, then what you're going to see is one, it's only moving a portion of it, which we will fix with an empty in a moment. But as you can see, there are actually objects stacked on top of one another. So you can choose one of them to ignore. I think it works best if you use this with the first one that you made. So in my case, it's the width. And everything else, I'm going to take the combine XYZ, put it at the start location. So you will get an extra one. So if we just want to tick that back one, and you go to volume, and we're going to throw these combines into the start location. And then as I said, you can bump this down one. And I actually realized I didn't create this. So what we're going to do is toss that in here, call this height. And then we can control that. And this is just a more correct way of doing it. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to click in here. I'm going to, oops. Oh, oops. I was hitting alt a. So I'm going to hit shift a and create an empty plane axis. I'm going to call this monkey anchor. I'm going to with this one selected, I'm just going to hit shift left click in the outliner should see everything selected here. I'm going to right click parent object, you can hit control P as well. But I just like to do it that way. So now if you click the monkey anchor, everything will move so you can rotate scale, you can just treat it as one uniform object. And you know, as I said, it is kind of annoying that you have to go to these individual things, but it's actually not that bad at the end of the day. So I really hope that this was a helpful tip. I hope you enjoyed the video today, everyone. As I've mentioned a couple times, I'm very surprised that this is not a feature inside of Blender, or at least it's not more intuitive to use. It, having an array doesn't seem like it's that difficult to implement into geometry nodes, but of all the complex things that people have been doing. This one seems to just have not been done. So I did spend some time looking through videos, but I wasn't able to find this exact feature because I really didn't need anything crazy out of them. I just wanted to take an object and array it with a the ability to change it dynamically in between scenes. I don't have to go in and actually physically duplicate them. And I wanted to 
have an instance since they all were going to be the same. And I think that this this definitely worked for me. So I hope that I'm also able to help some other people out. If this video did help you, I'd really appreciate it if you could hit that like button and subscribe to the channel if you're not already so you can stick around for our future videos. If you haven't already checked out my Unreal Engine course, I will leave a link to that below. It is a course that I'm putting up for free on YouTube. And for anyone that wants to get ready for Unreal Engine 5, I think it's a great place to start. Even though it is an Unreal Engine 4, we'll be slowly working through everything so that you have a much better understanding for when Unreal Engine 5 drops. So if you are interested, link is below. I'm going to leave it there. Have a great night, everyone. Thanks for watching.